Welcome to the Disneyville Podcast, Episode 8. I think I'm most excited about this one. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, we are very organized for this episode, and it's pleasing to me. <laughs> Overly so. Do Okay, do you want to introduce our, ourselves? Uh, introduce us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I am Jessica. This is my lovely husband, Tyler. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> Today... <laughs> And uh, we have got our coffee. It is the afternoon. I have a crick in my neck. Is that what you call it? Yeah. And <laughs> I told Tyler, I'm like, maybe I should be sitting on the other side because it hurts to turn my neck towards where you're sitting. So bear with me, Just everyone. If I sound weird, it's because my neck hurts. Just stay right up on that mic. Just <laughs> at <Yeah>. an angle. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have a lot to cover today. We we're talking about, so we're, we're doing moderate resorts. Which I think every episode we've done so far, I'm like, this is the one I'm most excited about. I'm most excited just about build this build somehow, I know. Because we were writing down all these notes of things we wanted to talk about. And I'm like, man, the moderate resorts are really good. <laughs> they really are. And I spent the last 30 minutes picking out some things that I think are not as known about certain resorts. And I think I have a few things that might surprise Tyler that I don't think you know. I haven't looked at the notes yet since you updated them. Okay. So. I'm pretty excited. They're juicy. They're things Ooh. that I was learning as well. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't know this. So, Also, we always have a corresponding blog post to whatever we're talking about in an episode on the welcome to Disneyville.com website. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we should put like show notes too, like our notes. That could be kind of cool too. Well, it kind of is one and the same. Yeah, I guess that's true. I was like, I feel like the blog posts, because they're usually detailed and anyway. So if you want yeah. more information or you're like, I don't feel like skimming through to figure out what it was they talked about, you'll most likely find a lot of that information in the blog post. Yep. Um, and under each episode on YouTube, I include that link. Or of course, you can just go to welcome to Disneyville.com. Dad can. Should we do our mug shots? We always forget until we're really like into halfway it. halfway through. So for those watching here on YouTube... I'll do Tyler, first. what you got? So these are both on theme for what we're talking about today. Oh, yes. Mine is a Café du Monde cup. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I couldn't think of, what's this thing called? A mug. Cup? Okay. Um, so this is actually, this is not a Disney mug. This is actually, Café du Monde is actually a coffee stand and beignet stand or not a stand, a restaurant in New Orleans. And we got this when we were there, which that's a whole fun story for a different day. I think we've talked about it oh, before. We have a lot of New Orleans and A lot stories, of New Orleans, guys. but this is it. And then it's got a little bit of the story on the back about Cafe Du Monde. But they yeah. have, they put chicory in their coffee. And so it's a very specific tasting coffee that I really like, but I wouldn't want it as like my first cup of the day, but like as a, an afternoon cup. Boy, you'd better sip that coffee down. It's about <laughs> to spill nervous. like molasses out your mouth. <laughs> Um, no, what is it Andy says in the office? Spit, spilling like molasses spilling out your mouth. I'm butchering it. I'm sorry, <laughs> you guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, so mine is a Princess Tiana mug, and it says Tiana on the one side, and it is very reminiscent, of course, of Port Orleans French Quarter, mm -hmm. which was, out of all the moderate resorts, the most recent one we've stayed at mm -hmm. in the fall yep, like of last 2022. October, yep. I think, mm -hmm. yeah. So excited to talk about some stuff. So, um, and the, if you look on the back here, sorry to interrupt there, it says ca it is uh, Cafe Du Monde is in the French Quarter in New Orleans. But of course, like molasses. <laughs> I feel like I should do like a little uh, a little intro, like Jimmy Fallon does. You know, whenever he does a, a bit, he always does like a uh, hashtag. Ba -na -dun -dun -na, hashtag. We should do like I should make a little mug ditty. shots. Ba -na -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> just straight just up steal it. Thing. Just steal it. Well, we did steal the mug shots already, so. <laughs> Who'd we steal that from? We talked about it like four times. From I'm really, never going to remember. Willie Tell Geist. Willie Geist oh, always you, does yeah, his mug did. shots. All right. Um, but yeah, I'll just Willie. Come, come up with a little ditty. Is his name Willie or Will E. Geist? I think they call him Willie. Like Willie. Like Willie. Steamboat. <laughs> As in Steamboat. Like a steamboat. So another thing we wanted to mention is that the new packages that you can book for 2024 mm -hmm. are available as of may 31st so by the time you're listening to this or watching this yeah. it, they're they're ready because they're can not book them they're not open as of recording date but yeah, yeah by now you'll they're, they're already open mm -hmm. so except you, uh galactic star cruiser that you can't you can't book galactic star cruiser <laughs> <laughs> so crazy so uh, much but um yeah and of course if you did not know Tyler does own a Disney. Well, it's a travel agency. Mm -hmm. 
of course, they are very good at Disney. <laughs> we too. have been we have been ramping up, getting ready for May thirty first for like a couple weeks now. So we are ready to go. We are going to hit the ground running. But like, when is this supposed to come out? Do you know the actual date? It's probably a couple days after May thirty first. So mm-hmm. by that point, if you guys are still interested in going in twenty twenty four and you haven't booked yet, contact one of my agents and they're yeah. going to be able to walk you through everything. And it's all free. People move or travel is what it's called. And everything we talk about here, they know all of it and then some so they're they really do they're the ones that we're like hey we're well we've talked about it like especially when we were in disneyland we're like hey where should we do this or what should we do first yeah they're the ones with all the answers and more so yeah. definitely uh worth doing even if you're someone that's gone to disney before but it's maybe it's been a while there have been a lot of changes a lot of things that would cause you a lot of stress they do it for you guys yeah for free and things continue to change too i mean every every week there's something new yeah, so we'll have the link to People Mover Travel down in the description box. And of course, you can find them on Instagram and everywhere else at People Mover Travel. How was that? That was good. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> we always joke that we could say that the podcast is sponsored by People Mover Travel, but it's not. It's not. It's <laughs> just also us. It's also just just more of Tyler, me. <laughs> would you just pay yourself to sponsor? Like, how's that work? <laughs> my own salaried employee. Yeah. My own sponsor. Okay. Hey, you know what? I'm sponsoring myself today. I <laughs> I don't know. How does that work? All right. So the tax implications alone. Oh my just... gosh, you guys. Are you still listening? Are you still there? <laughs> Galactic Star Cruiser, are you still there? <laughs> no. No, it's not. Okay. So we are talking today about Walt Disney World Moderate Resorts, and I can't wait. Should we just dive in? Yeah. Let's talk first about the few things that sort of set like moderate resorts. Overarching. Yes. And mm-hmm. then we're going to go through each individual resort. So when we're talking about moderate resorts in Walt Disney World, there's basically five. Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. Disney's Port Orleans Riverside. Mm-hmm. Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter. And then we are going to include the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Now, some people include them in the moderate category. Some don't. They're not really akin to the the moderate resorts but that's sort of how disney classifies them too but it's almost i always say that the art of animation family suites and the cabins at fort wilderness they're a very similar price point and Mm -hmm. they're a similar size and i think those are almost the two of those could almost be their own category yeah (laughs) it's not as simple as like you know value moderate deluxe anymore now there's villas and there's family suites and there's all these different i mean there's so many different yeah it gets real tricky when you're trying to compare resorts but we're going to include the cabins in our our section and we have got stuff to say about the cabins and mm. i learned something new today as well about that. so thinking about the sizes of the resorts something to note is that coronado springs is a convention resort as well mm-hmm. and so you're going to see a lot of people that are maybe not there for disney at all um which i mean that's not that big of a deal but i was seeing tyler typed in the notes uh, where did you say it it's probably under, under oh that, yeah. yeah we'll get to it but yeah just knowing that i do think is important because it gives it just a slightly different feel. Um, but size wise and like number of rooms wise, it looks as though Coronado certainly has the most amount of rooms, almost 2,500 mm-hmm. rooms. So that's definitely the biggest when it comes to amount of rooms available. Yeah. And I feel like generally you can usually find a room. Like there could be of, a lot of things sold out, but that hotel usually. Yeah, I would agree. That's one of the ones where typically you're going to be able to find some rooms. Something. So yeah. I, I find this interesting. Jessica said she didn't think it was interesting, but I'm going to talk about it anyway because I find it interesting. So looking That's at the fine. size of the resorts, Disney's Caribbean Beach, <laughs> depending on which resort you, or which website you look at, I literally found like five websites that talked about this and they each gave these two numbers. They were very specific numbers, but they're so far apart. So 1536 or 2112 so 1536 or 2112 are the room numbers that i got for the amount of rooms at caribbean beach those are vastly no, different yeah numbers. it's not a difference of 100 that's like they someone's finding 500 rooms or losing 500 it's crazy right but so i don't understand somebody that. else google it because i found like all these different websites i'm like so they're all they almost be pulling these numbers from each other but some pulled that one and some pulled that one i don't know Weird. but the the 2416 rooms at coronado springs that was on disney's website so that one we know is definitely the largest of the of Mm -hmm. the moderates then looking at port orleans riverside 2048 rooms port orleans french quarters 1008 rooms now if you combine those that would be the largest yeah yeah, and we'll talk about all of that too yeah but that so riverside is truly twice the size of uh french quarter and then the cabins at fort wilderness there are 409 cabins wow so one thing to note too, thinking about Fort Wilderness, is that they 
also, of course, have campsites. They have ones where you can drive your RV or your camper there. We know a lot about RVs and campers because <laughs> Tyler's dad and now his brother owns a literal RV dealership. RV yeah. dealership. So. Kind, of, kind of in my blood. We've camped at Fort Wilderness a lot. <laughs> um, especially growing up, I feel like you you did. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, um, so they have campsites for that. They also have like tent camping campsites. So those you can get for a song. But and of I, course, you're tent camping. And I feel like they have they have full hookup at the campsites. And they have some that are non-full hookup. I think they have both. And they have like premium sites and all that kind of stuff. But it's mm-hmm. 750 acres is... It's huge. That, that's massive. It's huge. <laughs> but I always mm. oh, I always tell people that if you've camped a lot, you've camped all over the country, one of the best places that has... Or the best bathrooms is Fort Wilderness. There, if you're showering at the shower house and all that kind of stuff, you're not using your, your camper... They're the nicest, like... <laughs> you get a little spoiled, bathrooms. and then you camp somewhere else, and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. Disney was so nice. They are they are very, very nice. <laughs> so um, let's talk, too, about room size, because that's something we get asked about with value versus moderate versus deluxe. So value resorts, they're around 260 square feet. We talked about, by the way, in our last episode, we talked about the value resorts, every single one, the same way we did this one. So if you missed that... Or if you're listening to this and you're like, actually, we're about to book and we were thinking about doing value, definitely go give that one a listen. It was episode nine. Mm-hmm. Um, no, or... episode seven. This what is episode, episode is this? I swear in my head you said 10. I think you said eight. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, definitely give that a, a, a watch or a listen. But the moderates versus the 260 for value, moderates are around 330 square feet. And deluxe, Wow can be from 350, so only a little bit more than moderate, up to 450 mm-hmm. square feet. And we're talking regular rooms, not villas, right? right not Because right. that would be... Standard rooms. Yeah. I think <clears throat> I think Grand Floridian rooms are the biggest hmm. it, when it comes to square footage for a standard room. I think that's that's the largest one. I so that's where that. the, the, those really big ones are. Um, but yeah, it is quite a big difference between the square footage of a value standard versus a deluxe standard. So that's one factor if you are considering, because we've had... Our, our girls in pack and plays in the value resorts and you i mean you are scurrying along the side <laughs> trying, trying to get around them. you really are but so that's again one thing to you make it work mm-hmm. but this is why moderates can really be the answer for a lot of people because yes well depending on when you book sometimes you get a good enough deal that it's not that much more than a value but Sometimes that extra space is just worth it. It makes so, all the difference. Yeah, we'll it really does. It. So one question, we're going to go ahead and answer right off the bat just because we're already on this topic. And I think it's a good start before we dive into all the hotels separately is why would you choose to stay at a moderate over a value? And there actually are a lot of reasons. I feel like there's less than there used to be. But as I dug a little bit deeper, and I think as you you just know this world, there actually are a good amount of reasons. Yeah. So we'll delve into all the different resorts, but as a, because this was when I was looking at the questions you guys posed, mm-hmm. um, this is definitely the most common question mm-hmm. we got. So I kind of wrote down a little list here. So um, basically, is it worth it to stay in a moderate overvalue? There's not really a wrong or right answer because mm-hmm. it's going to be up to you. So I wrote down this little list. So on average, you're going to spend anywhere between 50 and $100 more per night to stay in a moderate versus staying in a value resort. That's obviously, there's a million factors. The time you go, um, whether you're getting a, uh, uh, if you're paying rack rate versus getting a deal. So there's a million things that go into that, um, which resort you're actually looking at comparing Mm -hmm. it to the value. So there's a lot, but around 50 to hundred dollars more, but you're going to get larger rooms. You get additional amenities and we'll go through a lot of these when we go through the different Yeah, resorts. we'll be pretty specific for you guys. Um, you get different room types. So being able to stay in a one bedroom villa at Coronado Springs, you're going to have different options as opposed to just a standard view or standard room, preferred room, you know, at a lot of the, the values. Mm-hmm. Um, more restaurants and better restaurants. So mm-hmm. if you're eating at your resort, because some people don't, some people just want a place to lay their head. They don't eat at their resort. They don't care. But or they you, just grab a quick breakfast in the morning and go to the parks, which exactly. is understandable. So restaurants, better themed uh, pools and uh, uh, with water slides and hot tubs. And every single one does. I, I double and triple checked. All of them in the moderate category have water slides. All of them have hot tubs, even Fort Wilderness. Mm-hmm. So if you are a family and or even just a couple or whatever and you want to stay and you're going to do a day at your resort, that's something to kind of factor in. You mm-hmm. know, what pool time? Because we obviously love the value pools, but the... The pools of the moderates are really are really cool. cool. <laughs> um, uh, at uh, Coronado Springs, you'd have a fitness center, so that if that's something that's important to you, um, it's a more subtle theming versus the value resorts. And it was kind of funny because a bunch of the, not a bunch, but there were several comments on our value resort ones that were like, 
I can't stand the over the top Disney theming. They're, oh, some well, people then those just, are not for them. They're huh? just not for you. Yeah. yeah. And so I thought that was funny that a lot of people were like, I want the more subtle theming. So that's. Well, that's and it's not even that the theming is like subtle. It's more that it's not Disney theming. It's more whatever the theme of that hotel or that resort is. I keep saying hotel and it sounds wrong. Like, I don't know why Disney Hotel, I'm so used to saying Disney Resort. Yeah, anyway. they do call it resorts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, things to think about. Will you spend a lot of time at your resort? That's going to be part of the factor. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other big thing is that moderates are significantly less than deluxe resorts. So, if you want to take that step up and stay in a nicer hotel without going to the deluxe resorts. Extreme. Extreme. I mean, the jump from values to moderates is much smaller than the jump from moderates to deluxe resorts when it comes to pricing and that kind of stuff. So, and again, it depends on which one you're looking at time of year, whatever, but Mm -hmm. just as a general rule, it's quite a bit more, but you're going to get these higher end amenities, the larger rooms, all these things at a decent price point. And for the reality is for some people, budget is just not going to be the number one concern. That's just the way that it goes. So some people that's the, the one number one thing that, that they just want to save the least expensive because they're not going to spend time there, whatever. Mm-hmm. Other people, that's just not as much of a concern. So if that's something that you are debating between, if you can swing the larger room and the, the better pools and all that kind of stuff, I mean, why wouldn't you, you know? Yeah, well, and it really depends on like, I just think about how you're budgeting for your vacation. If you're like, this is the amount we're budgeting and you break it all down and you're like, oh, actually we have a little bit of wiggle room we could you know then maybe do it and if you don't then you already know we love the value resorts and again we certainly that our last episode was a love letter to the value resorts Well, and what what happens a lot of times is if somebody books like with the agents or with me when i was an agent when they would book far out they would book at a value resort well disney doesn't release all their special offers until closer to the departure date so when Mm -hmm. they would release a special offer we would relook at it and say okay actually for only a hundred dollars more for the week you're there we can get you in a moderate resort for basically the same price, but a little bit more. So you're staying in a moderate for around the same price as what you were going to pay. That's one of the best things you guys do, really, though, because if you've booked your trip up 12 months out or eight months out, whatever, and special offers come out, especially mm-hmm. as things have gotten a lot more normal, that's just awesome because, yeah, anyway. Yeah, moni- but, but, but yeah, all the, all the price monitoring. So, And again, like I said, it's hard to compare a standard room at All Star Music to a one-bedroom villa at Coronado Springs. So we're kind of going to be grasping at straws here. But anyway, so that was a big question. I wanted to kind of answer that at the yeah. beginning. Yeah, so to add on a little bit of juice to that, <laughs> <laughs> let me scroll to the tap where I had that. So thinking about the rooms themselves, with moderates, you'll typically have two sinks versus mm-hmm. one that's kind of nice. (laughs) You're on vacation and you may love your spouse, but it is nice. It's, or even just having kids. It's nice to have a little bit of separation there. And in some cases they'll have a ceiling fan. Like I want to say when we were in French quarter, Port Orleans, French quarter, they had one. Um, I know Coronado Springs when I stayed there, it had one. Um, but I I don't think it's standard, but some of them do have that. Um, and like we said, they all have hot tubs and water slides, but if you have kids, all of them have playgrounds. All of them have movies under the stars. All of them have campfires and all of them have arcades. I looked, I wanted to make sure. And again, that's not necessarily different than the values, but I do think it's important to know, like, even if you're like, oh, well, we don't want the over the top theming, you're still going to have a lot of those cool Disney fun things going on there. Um, And if you go to a moderate resort, ask about scavenger hunts. All of the moderate resorts, based on my research, offer them. So you can ask at the front desk. They can direct you to where to go. They might just have them there. Um, And they're all different. That's what's so interesting to me. And they're really cool. The blogs I was reading about it, people were, they were just grown adults doing it. And I think that's awesome too. We came upon scavenger hunts at Disney because when we stayed at the Riviera Mm -hmm. in the craft room, she had, there were like two, there was a Riviera one. They also had a Skyliner scavenger hunt. So anyway, don't forget to ask about it because even if you don't have kids, it's super fun. Yeah. And well, and now the moderate resorts, are very similar to the value resorts in a lot of ways, but the the value resorts just continue to get better and better. So like things like coffee makers, that used to be something we had to consider, but now it's not, you know, Mm -hmm. and the, uh, what else? The the transportation. We used to have, I mean, it was that the Port Orleans French Quarter and Riverside had the boat to Disney Springs. So it was like one additional means of transportation and things like that. But now we got the Skyliner at the Art of Animation and Pop Century and all that kind of stuff. So it really is- Kind of leveled the playing field a a bit. It's a hard comparison to make. I think- I think the only option is to go 25 times and stay at each every, and single, one. every single one of them. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> there we go. So Problem solved. Shall we get into the each hotel? Yes. But before we go to this first one here, mm-hmm. I want to see on our list here, 
Okay. You see which one we're talking about first. Yeah. Say it. Caribbean Beach. Caribbean Beach? You say Caribbean Beach? No, I say Disney's Caribbean Beach. Me too. But I Pirates say Pirates of the Caribbean. The, Pirates of the Caribbean is what I you say. You do not. I do. You say Caribbean. I've heard you say it a million times. I feel Pirates. like I feel like with Caribbean Beach, I always say Caribbean Beach, but with Pirates, I go back and forth. You say Pirates of the Caribbean? I think I Wait, do. Wait, that does kind of sound But I say Disney's, Pirates of the Caribbean. No, I'll say like Caribbean Beach. Oh, we're going over to the uh, Caribbean Beach Resort today. Doesn't Caribbean. that sound? Wait. Is there a right or wrong way I don't to know. say it? I just, and now I'm, I'm questioning everything. I don't know how I actually say it. We're going to go eat at Caribbean Beach. We're going to go eat at Caribbean Beach. How about if I just run up on it? Caribbean Beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so we're just, let's go back and forth every other time. <laughs> so, I'll forget what I said so last time. So the first time. one we're going to talk about is Disney's Caribbean, Caribbean Beach. <laughs> So, okay, so the, the whole idea behind it is it's a tropical island feel, obviously, based mm-hmm. on the name. I'm sure you could probably figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, there are five sections to the resort. There is Aruba, Jamaica, who I want to take. <laughs> I was like, if you don't. Um, let's see. Uh, Martinique, mm-hmm. Trinidad, and Barbados. Nice. Those are the five different sections of the resort. Um, obviously, it's they're all similar. It's it's a matter of theming changes, and you know the building colors are a little bit different, but it's it's all basically the the same room types. But when it comes to trying to pick out where you want to stay, that's really the biggest factor for me when it comes to picking out which section. Mm-hmm. There are preferred rooms, and at Caribbean Beach, that used to be the best one <laughs> to do it because you would be close to uh, the center market and all that kind of stuff there. Now. With the Skyliner, what? Still thinking about it. Caribbean or Caribbean? <laughs> I hate you for this. Go ahead. So with uh, the Skyliner now, I actually have a different section that I, I recommend, but you can't request, or you have to, it's a request, not a guarantee. So the section that I would recommend is the Jamaica section. That's the closest to the Skyliner and close to uh, the, the center market and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's kind of a really good section to be in, but you have to request to be in that section. So call ahead or have your agent call and request to be in that section. If you do a preferred room, it's going to cost a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Those are in uh, uh, Martinique and Barbados. And those are still close to that area, but I think it's even better to be closer to the Skyliner because it's really kind of right in the middle of those uh, of those two. Mm-hmm. So that would be my suggestion. Save yourself a little bit of money and request to be in the Jamaica section. Of course, it's not a guarantee, but that's... So you're saying the Jamaica section is not preferred, meaning you wouldn't have to pay more. Exactly. But it's really ideal for Skyliner use, which is two parks mm-hmm. you get to, Epcot and Hollywood yep. Studios. And depending on where you're... And the Riviera is right there. So you can just walk exactly. right on over there, yeah. get some coffee at their coffee shop. I misspoke earlier because Caribbean Beach, according to my research, is the only one that doesn't have an arcade. And and now I'm questioning that. Let me let me look that up because it seems crazy that Caribbean Beach is a very large resort. And if you've ever walked around it, it just keeps going and going. There's so much to do. The main pool area we're going to talk about is so cool. And it seems wild to me that this would be one of the ones that doesn't have an arcade. Well, what's amazing is over the past couple of years, like what, seven, eight years, Coronado Springs and Caribbean Beach have seen so many renovations to public areas, to everything. They've done such an amazing job of refreshing these resorts. And so it's really sort of changed a lot in my mind as far as what the moderate resorts are in my head. You know, there's been so much change and I Mm -hmm. think really positive change. I wonder if they'll ever restructure some things because even in the deluxe category we're kind of getting off on a tangent but even in the deluxe category there's how many resorts 10 ish i think think more somewhere around there in the deluxe category and some of them are definitely more deluxe than others so i wonder if they'll kind of split it we act like this is earth shattering like only all us disney nerds like deluxe plus oh my gosh they changed the categories but it would be kind of earth shattering in the disney world because these have been the way they've been anyway well that's the big drama still... right now sorry is that they're changing room categories for some of these rooms so like the i don't even think they're changing the room type they're changing the verbiage of the room views and that's a big thing right now well hey i mean (laughs) change is a big deal some people do not like change so yeah again on disney's site it lists the resorts that have arcades and it does not i know you guys were very worried it it does not that is interesting though (laughs) i know huh so the, the the five different areas are around uh, Barefoot Bay, which is the name of the waterway there. And really at the the one end is the Riviera Resort. So if you're staying at the Riviera, 
or if you're staying at Caribbean Beach, they're like right there. So they are truly right there. You can just walk to one or the other. So if you want to go get, if you're staying at Caribbean Beach, you want to walk to Riviera for breakfast or whatever, it's right there. So it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, the last time we were there in January, we stayed at the Riviera and I, me and my mom and the girls walked over to Caribbean Beach's quick service and had breakfast over there and just kind of putzed around, sat in the hammocks. Didn't your mom like fall out of a hammock? <laughs> no, she very gracefully got in one. It okay. wasn't a block. No, I thought she would. She didn't. <laughs> I was so proud of her. Um, no, but really, it, it's so neat when you are at a resort that's close to another that you can just walk because, yeah, we just walked by the beach area and went to the gift shop over there and just walked around. So the other area that you could request to stay in is Aruba that's because cool. Aruba is close to the Riviera Skyliner Station. So again, really... Let me see this map. Pass it over. There, uh, There's a lot of areas um, that are not preferred rooms that are still relatively well-placed. Trinidad is the one section that's kind of far away from everything. They used to have pirate rooms there. Do you remember the pirate rooms? Oh, oh yeah. 100%. I stayed there in 2016 with mm -hmm. my mom in a pirate room and I loved them. They had like a big old uh, barrel as like the refrigerator area. That's so cool. They had shipping crates as the dresser and stuff like that. The They had a ship's mast above the bed. I thought they were awesome, but a lot of people really hated them. And I think the biggest reason people hated them was because they were so far away from everything. So I think it was more a location versus the room types themselves, but they're getting rid of the pirate rooms. Which that was news to me. I was sad Man. about until I saw what they're doing with them. So they're changing the pirate rooms into little mermaid rooms. And the new ones look really nice. <laughs> they really do, you guys. We were we were looking around at different blogs about it and I when I first heard Little Mermaid Rooms, I'm like, they're already doing that at, at Art of Animation. Like why would they yeah. totally different. Mm -hmm. Honestly, well, and I guess that makes sense. That was value. This is moderate. They're so nice and bright. They've got the new nice like hardwood ish flooring. Yeah, whatever those flooring. Yeah. Yeah, they've got the pull down couch bed thing. Like, remember the one we talked about in the value? That's like actually a bed, not a couch. Mm -hmm. You'd have to see it to know what we mean. And then they also have the option for like a fifth sleeper that pulls down, which that's Genevieve's favorite kind of bed to sleep in because yeah. it pulls down like sideways. Yeah, that's a big thing with the moderate resorts that you're not going to have at the value resorts. Is if you're a family of five with younger kids, they have a child size pull down bed. And you can all stay in one room. It's I think it's like 66 inches by 31, but it's I mean it's it's made for a child under I don't know 10. I don't know how tall kids are, yeah. um, but it's made for a child. And so if you are a family of five, you're pretty much you're going to do a moderate. You're not going to be able to do a value resort unless so that's you a, maybe do art of animation. But yeah, right. But that's going to be a lot more expensive than mm -hmm. doing a fifth sleeper at any of these resorts. So mm -hmm. that fifth sleeper is really nice. Um, the the pull down bed in the new ones that they're doing has a couch underneath instead of the table which is what they have at Pop Century and stuff like that. They have the, the table underneath. This is just a couch. So I think that's kind of nice because it sort of gives you more walking room. Um, and Since if you're the not room gonna, itself is a little smaller. Exactly. Than... And if you're not going to be standing, or I mean, not going to be eating in your room very often, I think a couch is a little bit more useful than the tables would be. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I just think that it's just a, such a smart update. So um, they're open for booking, as they say, sometime in 2023. So I guess we wait, right? <laughs> I mean, we wait. Yeah, and yeah. we wait, but that's so cool. I would totally, again, they're kind of far away, but um, also looking at the map of Caribbean beach, I knew this, but seeing it in a map is interesting that Caribbean beach, there's Riviera there. And then it's almost as if Caribbean beach flows from that on both sides of the Riviera. Like you have to see the map, to see what we're talking about, but it, mm -hmm. I found that fascinating. Yeah, because Barefoot Bay is basically right in front of the Riviera. Yeah. And then, yeah, on either side of that is where the yeah. Caribbean beach goes. So cute. So restaurants. So we, <laughs> we actually have only eaten at one of these, not all of them. A lot of these that we'll hit, we've, we've tried a decent amount. But I feel like we've tried a lot of restaurants at deluxe ones because even if we weren't staying there, those are like almost destination resorts that we would just like leave the Magic Kingdom, get on the monorail and go try a restaurant restaurant at the Grand Floridian. These aren't quite as easy to get to. So we just we just haven't tried a lot of them. So Sebastian's Bistro is high on our list. And this is this random, it's a table service sit down restaurant mm -hmm. at Caribbean Beach. And the weirdest thing about this restaurant is it's kind of like the like whole Sinbad thing or what's that called? A Mandela effect. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. you swear you've never, well, I guess it's not quite. Neither of us had ever heard of this. And apparently it's been around forever. And we know of, I swear, every 
restaurant that's ever existed in Disney. And this one's just been under the radar for both of us mm-hmm. forever. And yeah. it's been there a long time. Yeah, I, I it was like 2019. Somebody was like, oh, Sebastian's Bistro. And I'm like, what, like, is, what, what is that? About? And I'm like, it's been around forever. I'm like, I have never in the 10 years that I've been going to Disney World as an adult ever heard of Sebastian's Bistro. I ever. swear it didn't exist. And any of the times we've made uh, reservations, like it's wild to me that we had never, ever, ever heard or seen this resort. <laughs> it's so weird. Just so wild. we one day we will try it and it's going to be glorious. We'll be like let down or something. <laughs> I don't know. But then there's a few quick service um, mm-hmm. or there's uh, the Centertown Market. Which, that's where we had a quick service breakfast. It's just their main quick service area. Again, you can walk to it from the Riviera if you wanted. Um, But I compared a lot of the menus of all the moderate resorts. This one got second place. So I'll share. Mm -hmm. Like, when it comes to the food options. Again, a lot of them are all going to have the same types of things. They're going to similar breakfast options as any of the quick service places anywhere in Disney World, period. Um, and they all have things like hamburgers, pizza, et cetera. But this one had a good amount of different kind of other type options. So we mm-hmm. got second place food wise in all the nice moderate quick services. I'm really excited about this next one just because I wanted to say banana cabana. <laughs> it's just a bar they have there, but I wanted to say banana cabana. Banana cabana. I can't even say it. Banana cabana. <laughs> So that's fun. And then Spy Spyglass Grill is another one that I had never really heard of, but it's apparently in the Trinidad section, which is the one I was just talking about, which had the pirate rooms. Now it's going to be the kind Little Mermaid rooms, away. but it's really far away. So I think the idea was they put this there so that it wouldn't be as far as a, of a walk to get some quick service. I bet it's not quite as busy either. So mm-hmm. yeah, right. we've got to go over and look at that because I haven't since yeah. I stayed there in 2016, I haven't been over to that section of the resort. Yeah. So the pools. Caribbean Beach, um, their pool is really pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, Fuentes del Moro? Mm. Is that it? Did I say it right? Yeah. You're the one who speaks Spanish. Oh, my Spanish is poor at best. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, this it's not my favorite moderate pool, but it is a very cool pool. Cool pool. (laughs) Um, But one thing to know, too, is that each island section... Is that true? They have... They each have their own pool? Yep. Each each of the five Holy island moly, sections it's a lot of has its own pool. And then it also has the uh, the main pool there. Okay. Yeah. No, this is one of the cooler ones. I, I confused this one with Coronado Springs pool, which I think is fair. Like if you had showed me this and made me guess, which I think I would have said Coronado yeah. Springs. Um, but yeah, kind of like an old Spanish citadel type. They've got like cannons that shoot out water. It's a kind of unique shape to kind of swim around. It it actually is pretty cool yeah i think it's cool too i think now that i'm looking at it i think it's my second favorite of the moderate pools is is this one i could see that and they of course got their water slide um they have a splash pad area yeah so right outside the calypso like trading post gift shop area they have a splash pad area that's really cool it looks like kind of a shipwreck type thing and then there's like just for smaller kids there's like a couple little slides and it's all wet so really fun yeah it's i love a good splash pad because when you have a young kid that doesn't swim swim it is fun i was like yeah it's, so it's being it's, it's always fun walking up with with Gigi and being like oh i guess i have to go with the splash pad Whee! <laughs> it's totally fun <laughs> uh, okay so as far as transportation it is on the skyliner it actually has the skyliner hub at the at the resort it is the only moderate that is on the skyliner so that's something to consider and i know some people don't like the skyliner like we talked about some people are afraid of heights or or if it shuts down for weather or whatever I love the Skyliner. I do too. I feel like in all the times we've stayed at a Skyliner resort, we've never had to wait. Knock on wood. We've never had to wait for the Skyliner. It's always because it's the Omnimover. Somebody did say, though, that they had to wait like an hour to get on the Skyliner one day. But they said that was pretty early on in uh, post-COVID opening. So maybe that was part of it. They were understaffed maybe. or something. But Like we've waited maybe 10 minutes, like maybe. in the morning when a park is about to open. But I mean... 10 minutes versus you you can wait crazy amounts for buses and stuff like that. Yeah. And of course, waiting for the Skyliner after the fireworks end at Epcot or Hollywood Studios, that's a wait. That's, yeah, that that's the... We I always say, leave the fireworks five minutes early. Trust us. Trust us. Or stay for a long time in the or park Or like after, an hour after, yeah. Depending on when the park actually closes. Pick your, pick your poison there. <laughs> um, but there is also because this resort is so large, an internal bus system. So that's something to consider too. There are multiple stops in the resort. Before you actually get to or from your So a recent stay in Saratoga Springs, it has an internal bus system too. And my 
it really is nice because at least you're not having to walk so far to like the one central bus station. So that piece of it is lovely. And I think that's, I mean, that's definitely why they have it. But it is hard at the end of the night or if you're in a hurry to get to like a reservation and you're having to stop at every single stop once you get on the bus until you finally head to the, (laughs) it is a little annoying, but it's kind of one of those like, well, pros and cons. Like it just is what it is, but All right, so shall we move on to our next one? The even bigger one. Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. So Disney's description of the theming of this is that it's a blend of Spanish, Mexican, and Southwest American cultures. Quite a mix. Yeah. Um, It's amazing, though, looking at this resort when we first started going and looking at it now, they basically are two completely different resorts with all the changes they've made. They've added huge the Grand Casino Tower. They've added the three bridges. All these things that have been huge renovations. It's like almost unrecognizable from when we first started going. We, I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I first stayed there in 2017, I think, when I was there for my agency training. Mm-hmm. And looking at it then and now, I feel like it's changed so much. So I've never actually stayed there. And we were walking to Toledo, which is one of the restaurants there that's new that is so so cool um we got to walk through most of the resort to get there and i was astounded by a the sheer size of it all but b just the new area like it's so so cool it's so cool Mm -hmm. the lobby the the tower like i yeah i know some people have eaten at the three bridges too and love it well, and the view out there is so cool. I th- I'm pretty sure, wasn't it called Three Bridges? Because it's literally like kind of in the water there. And it, there's three bridges that lead up mm-hmm. to it. Which exactly, is just a yeah. cute name. But it's kind of one of those like outdoor-ish grill bar type places. So the views are really nice. But you're under shelter. So if it's a scorching hot day, you're still kind of, you know, you're in the shade. Yeah. It's just a really pretty environment. And I've heard the food is really good too. Yeah. But so we've got to add both. We should we should stay at Coronado Springs, really. I want to stay in the tower. And try and try that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so the Grand Casino Tower, that uh, when, uh, 2019, I think it opened. It's not too, it's not super old. So the main lake is called Lago Dorado. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. You speak Spanish. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the main check-in area is called El Centro. So the lobby of the oh it's of the whole resort right but the tower is right right there is that right no el centro is the like main area i think that's like the main check-in for the rest of the resort Mm -hmm. and then uh grand casino tower has its own lobby and that's the lobby we saw that was just spectacular beautiful oh my gosh beautiful so really they have two lobbies okay that makes sense so central areas yeah their their new lobby in that new area is worth just checking out like honestly us we went there did we catch a bus from a resort or from a park yeah we did um and went there just to eat at toledo the new really nice restaurant and just go to see this yeah (laughs) just go to see it grab a drink up at the like lounge area Mm -hmm. which that lounge area has it's called dahlia lounge and it's right near the entrance to toledo as well you can see views because they have an outdoor viewing area as well you can see hollywood studios um i'm pretty sure some of epcot yeah I think you can see probably Anim- other resorts. I think you can see Everest as well, like out way in the, the distance. distance. So I mean, it's the yeah. coolest view. So, well, I was going to talk about the rooms here in a minute, but we can just talk about it now quickly. So, in the tower, they have the water view rooms, and then they have the standard view rooms. And this is another time where I would actually recommend staying in a standard view room because you're going to get those views of the parks. Because the other one has the views of the water, which is really nice. But save yourself some money. Request a high floor. You're going to get some amazing views of the parks. Yeah, I mean that alone, and fireworks viewing coronado springs is i think the only moderate resort that you can actually see fireworks from them so i was kind of looking into it to make sure i i didn't misspeak so you can see the epcot fireworks from dahlia lounge yes yeah isn't that cool i think yeah i didn't think about that because if you can see epcot but i looked it up sure enough well we could even see when we were eating there way off in the distance we could see magic kingdom from our table Remember, because we could we saw. But we the, were facing a different direction from Dahlia Lounge. I'm pretty sure. Right, we were at the we were at Toledo on the other side. Yeah, and we could see Magic Kingdom. Yeah, it's just a cool placement. I guess that's just it. Yeah. And having the tower go higher means you can just see farther. Okay, so let's talk about the the actual rooms mm-hmm. at Coronado. Yeah, I feel like the the rooms themselves, the the standard rooms, are nice. I think they were renovated like 2009, but they look a lot like the new ones they're doing now. 
so I think that was like one of the first ones they redid uh, mm-hmm. because again, Coronado Springs is a huge convention resort. So that's one of the biggest detractions, if you will. A lot of people say that when you're staying there, and I kind of agree with it, there's a lot of people there that are there for conventions that aren't Disney people, so you might not have the same sort of feel as far like as... Like vacation feel right, almost. Right, exactly, because they're working, you know, they've all got their lanyards on and polo shirts, you know what I mean? The, the standard convention year's <laughs> outfit. But that, I don't think that should be maybe the thing that change I, I don't think it's that big of a deal but it's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind mm-hmm. but again they have so many other amenities because of that they have the fitness centers they have all that kind a of stuff a lot of restaurant options a lot of restaurants so things that you wouldn't get they well we'll get to the restaurants here in a minute but that is one thing that just to kind of keep in mind that they do have a lot of conventions there um when i did my agency training that was there it was at the in the uh convention area there that's where our classes were yeah um so the um they're obviously the, the standard rooms. Then there are the rooms in Grand Casino Tower. So Grand Casino Tower, like I said, I think opened in 2019. Um, I think it's just beautiful. And I have... It's gorgeous. One of the agents goes and she stays there like every single time. I think she stayed there like 15 times or something ridiculous. Like she oh stays gosh. there every time. Now I heard, and I don't know, there was some... Okay, long story short, I kept hearing that they were walking a lot of people. And that basically means that you would arrive to say at Grand Estino Tower. And then they would say, oh, actually, we've oversold our rooms. And they would walk you somewhere else. I don't know if that was just a weird blip of time. If that's, I, I mean, hope so, because I'm dying to say there. But we've never pulled the trigger like in the tower because that kept happening to yeah. people. And so and you've worked in hotels enough to know like that is a thing that hotels do disney included walking people at 11 o'clock at night who just spent all day traveling like oh we oversold our rooms hotels man man that made anyway different conversation different but looking at the room types themselves so assuming that's kind of a thing of the past hopefully hopefully (laughs) um and you guys can let us know your experience like has that happened to you or did you book a room in the tower and have no issues um because obviously plenty of people book rooms in the towers and actually obviously stay in the tower so um but the rooms themselves are just very clean looking. They're not, I wouldn't say any of them are highly themed. Which but makes they, sense. Yeah. In hotel. But they definitely still feel Disney-ish. And I can't explain it. I don't mean like Mickey Mouse-ish, but they definitely still feel like a high level of like everything looks really nice and clean. But it does look a little generic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I they're mean, pretty. But again, that's but what they're pretty. <laughs> makes sense in this hotel, especially. Yeah. Um, but the uh, so the Grand Casino Tower, if you don't know, is based off of a short that Walt Disney did with Salvador Dali. And I don't think it was ever finished in either of their lifetimes. I think they finished it after the fact, if I remember right. Mm. But it's based off of this short called Destino. And it's uh, like a modernisma sort of feel like you would see in a lot of like uh, in like Barcelona and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. that sort of um, aesthetic style. But I think it's really pretty. It is and pretty. the the building itself, I think, is really nice. They've, they've kind of got some things on the front of it, but the interior just blows me away. Yeah, it's it's just one of those lobbies that you're like, oh, wow. And it's funny because some of the deluxe resort lobbies don't have that wow factor. Mm-hmm. And I always find that interesting. Like I love Saratoga Springs. That's a deluxe resort. The lobby, none of it has that wow factor yeah. at all. It's still cute. I mean, you'll see in our vlogs if you haven't seen them. But yeah, but this is one that even though it's not even a deluxe, it has. It feels like a deluxe. It feels like a deluxe. It really does. Um, so the, there's a- <clears throat> I was going to really quickly talk about the elevators. I think these elevators are so cool. It's I think it's sort of like the parking lights that these things have been around for a long time, but uh, <laughs> I, not, not here in Indiana. So uh, <laughs> I think it's really cool. They it have these cool. elevators. And they sort of work backwards. So instead of just pressing the up or down button, you select which floor you want to go to, and then it tells you which elevator to go to, and you go directly there instead of stopping on multiple floors. I think we experienced that a lot in um, New, New York, York. Uh, when we were there last. Even I think the hotel we stayed in had that too. Yeah. But it's It really is kind of smart, especially when you're dealing with a lot of floors, a lot of rooms. It, I think it just kind of streamlines the process a bit. Yeah. So in the... Um, in so there's three different sections. There's the uh, ranchos, cabanas, and casitas. Those are the standard room areas. And then there's the Grand Estino Tower itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just wanted to quickly say, just looking at the Grand Estino Tower, there are so many room types. There's standard view, preferred view, preferred room, I'm sorry, standard view, preferred room, preferred room, king bed, water view, water view, king bed, one bedroom suite, king bed, casitas, one bedroom suite, casitas, executive suite. Like they have so many different things. I think there's yeah. a presidential suite somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um the, there's just so many different options. So if you're wanting Coronado. to have different choices, this is a good one to look at when it comes to like, especially if you do have a lot of people, maybe you look at one of the casitas that sleeps like up to six or up to eight, 
versus a deluxe villa where that adds up very fast and this might be slightly cheaper of course because it's technically in a different bracket yeah and the the in i think so the casita is the one bedroom suite sleeps six and the executive suite sleeps up to eight so instead of having multiple rooms a lot of times it's going to be less expensive to do one larger room so something to at least look at there so let's talk restaurants um toledo is the one we've mentioned already that we've stayed at gorgeous like the ceiling the (sighs) glass art that you basically see i mean i don't know what else to call it because Mm -hmm. it is art is stunning i don't think i really knew what to expect going into it i just knew it was new and it was kind of nice it was gorgeous the views like we said you can see on one side magic kingdom on the other side you can see epcot and hollywood studios i was doing a little digging because we took a little break midway through this and you can see the fireworks for i think any of those from the restaurant itself but they're kind of far away. So just keeping that in mind, Magic Kingdom's even farther away than Epcot and Hollywood Studios is. So knowing that it's not going to be the same experience you'd get from like seeing it from just across from the Polynesian to the Magic Kingdom. Actually, right. Well, anyway. or from like California. Yeah, Bureau that's really like what that. I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the Toledo, it was beautiful. Our service was amazing. The, the food, food was, was amazing. amazing. Like mm-hmm. everything about it. I would go there. I would recommend it a million times over. And it's one of those, like, because it is off the beaten path and it's not as easy to get to because it's on the bus line, if you will, It it's like an underrated gem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's still so new. but It's pretty it's, easy to get reservations. And yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Totally loved it. So we talked about Three Bridges, another table service that they had. Maybe not quite as, like, nice as Toledo because it is more outside, but really, really pretty. They have a lot of, like, outdoor fire. So, like, mm-hmm. if it's chillier, I mean, yeah. not that often that it's right chilly. right in the center but... of uh, Lago Dorado, right there in the middle. Yeah, it's beautiful. so it's just pretty views. They have Rick's Sports Bar, which is, like, an upscale sports lounge. Mm-hmm. We've not With been, but... 31 TVs. That's too many TVs, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Oh, uh, can I talk about this? Yeah. The quick service there. Coronado Springs Quick Service wins the award of all the moderates for the best menu options, most diverse choices. I was so impressed as I clicked through all the different menus and I'm looking. This one had, of course, all the standard fare that you would expect, like burgers, chicken, etc. But it had so many more options than especially Port Orleans and all of them, but also more than Caribbean Beach. So yay for Coronado. They definitely have the best. I think just from a food perspective, out of the moderate moderates, Coronado wins. Yeah, I, I think so too. They so have if you're the, a foodie. They, they have the most restaurants. I think they have the best options, and there's just so many. Looking at something like French Quarter, which has one quick service restaurant, versus this, which has, I mean, what? One, one two, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven different options. Yeah, it's a lot, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so looking at the pools, okay. So there's also Siesta Cantina and Laguna Bar. Those are both. Uh, uh like up bar. pool bars yep also maya grills table yeah. service i was looking that up though and looking at pictures it looks like it maybe needs a renovation <laughs> that's <laughs> it was where, like it looks a little old that's where uh we had our agency dinner the, the first night how had, was like, it we well it was like a catered event so it wasn't like we but how did up it the menu. appear how did it seem i don't really remember yeah just looking at the pictures fine. i was like it looks like it just needs a little little love i feel like it was fine okay um okay so the pools um so this is my favorite pool when it comes to the moderate resorts yeah. it's called the dig site and it is so cool they have this like big um like mayan or is it aztec pyramid uh in the middle and it looks like all these ancient ruins and stuff i think it's so cool i just i i love it so i i wrote down i just copy and pasted from the disney website because i think i'm like i can't do better than this so i just mm-hmm. i'm just gonna read it so it says discover the lost city of Cibola pool whose centerpiece is a 50 foot pyramid where weary explorers can revive themselves in the water streaming down its so- stone steps wow i know right that's crazy so that's a uh, so it's got the seasonal poolside activities, pool bar, white sand volleyball court, uh, iguana arcade, kitty pool. I mean, it's got everything. Largest hot tub on property. Yes, yeah. On Disney World property, I think it feeds yeah, t- feeds seats twenty two <laughs> people. Oh, and it also has three like leisure pools in each sec, like one in each section outside right. of the main one. Right. But yeah, that is definitely one of the coolest Disney pools that is offered. They also have a um, splash zone. Um, and also side note, they have a really cool, if this is the one has a really cool, uh, playground. Okay. Well, you're looking for that. So just so you know, 
the one of the downsides with Coronado Springs is the transportation. Obviously, it's not on the Skyliner. It doesn't have, uh, like the other ones have a boat to Disney Springs. So there's no other options with Coronado Springs. It's only bus systems. And because it's a big resort, it's got an internal bus system too. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at Coronado Springs. Yeah, okay. So Coronado Springs has a splash pad as well. Um, and I just feel like it's one of those resorts. I'm trying to see a picture of the splash pad because I think this might have been one of the ones that's kind of like a meh one. Whereas like some of the other splash pads at the moderates are really cool. And I think this one is just kind of like a like it's just like a little look. Oh, yeah, that is pretty, pretty, pretty nothing. Yeah. Um, okay, so we need to pick up the pace here because we still have three resorts to talk about oh and we have to get to your questions slash stories. So uh, let's go over to Port Orleans Riverside. This used to be your favorite and we're going to rank ours here in a minute. For years. Yeah. For years, this was what I recommended to people who wanted to stay at a moderate resort. Mm -hmm. It was always my go-to resort. That in the last two years maybe has changed and we'll go over that here in a little bit. But I, I still do love Riverside. It's still one of my absolute favorites. So oh, yeah. there's two sections. There's the Alligator Bayou, and then there is Magnolia Bend. Those are the two main sections of the resort. Um, the Alligator Bayou is a bunch of real small, sm or smaller buildings, and then the Magnolia Bend are these huge sort of uh, like houses. They look like, mm -hmm. um, and the 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 rooms themselves are pretty much the same, just different decorations and stuff like that. But if you're gonna stay at Port Orleans Riverside, I always used to call and request for my clients to stay in the Magnolia Bend section because I think the location is better and I feel like it feels more opulent when you're staying there. I think it just feels like a nicer resort than the Alligator Bayou section. So if that's one you want to stay in, I would recommend doing that. Yeah. And it's it's kind of the whole resort itself has like that laid back Louisiana yeah. kind of atmosphere, if mm -hmm. you will. And the Royal Guest Rooms, those yes. are in the Magnolia Bend. That's where we stayed with, uh, with my mom... 2016 something like yeah, that pre Genevieve um, and that was really cool and so that's it so the royal rooms they're based off of Tiana which makes sense mm -hmm. but they are it's supposed to be like all of her friends like gave her stuff or like left stuff behind whatever it is whatever their storyline is but it's got all these different like princess touches it's and cute. stuff like that we should say there soon with Genevieve because she, she would, would love that love it. but they've got these fiber optic headboards with uh, like they look like they're shooting off fireworks yeah. and I love the sinks they look like the uh, aladdin's lamp like they left aladdin's lamp there and stuff like that so they're just they're they're Gosh, really i don't remember rooms. that detail that's so cute um so they have their main pool the riverside pool mm. I, I don't like out of it. all of them i had to look up a picture i'm like oh comparing all of them it definitely is the weakest when it comes to like if you're a kid looking for a pool to have fun in um, but they have a playground out there and one cool thing about the port orleans resorts is that you can do Bike rentals, Surrey bike rentals, fishing, horse-drawn carriages, campfires, movies under the stars, obviously like carriage rides and stuff you'd be paying for. But there's a lot to do there. And also keeping in mind that Port Orleans Riverside and Port Orleans French Quarter are, I mean, sister resorts, right? They're right there. They're all kind of connected. And so if you wanted to go to the other one to eat at their quick service or go to the other one for their movie under the stars, mm -hmm. whatever, you can totally do that. And it's not a crazy yeah. long walk it's one of those resorts when you look at it really if you're looking at alligator bayou and magnolia bend and then you look at port orleans french quarter i'm like well that could really just be a part of the resort i mean you're looking at something like caribbean beach where they've got these five different sections it's just about french, as big you french might as quarter well, yeah. is basically just its own section it could just be all a part of the same resort mm -hmm. um but uh the what was i gonna say shoot i already lost my mind my, my, i already lost my mind <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um, i hope you find it oh at port orleans riverside they have fishing excursions too, or like fishing, a fishing area. So mm -hmm. if you have somebody in your family that loves to fish, that's another uh, thing to consider is that you can do it while you're there. Yeah. So looking at the the rooms there, mm -hmm. they're pretty, again, across the board, you've got your pool view, water view, standard room, all the kind of stuff, but they do also have some fifth sleeper ones as well. So again, this is one you can consider if you are a family of five, having that extra bed is, is really nice. Oh yeah. One thing we talked about in our value resorts episode last time was that if you were curious what does preferred room mean that typically means if you pay it you know you pay a little bit more for a preferred room but a lot of times that means you're closer to the main lobby the quick service food court the bus station so if not walking a lot at the beginning or end of your day is important that's where you might consider the preferred room the room itself will probably be the same as the mm -hmm. standard room it's just 
the location, right. et cetera. Exactly, yeah. And that's, that's pretty much across the board when it comes to the moderates and value resorts, preferred rooms, refer to the location, not the room itself. Yeah. So restaurant food-wise, not a crazy amount of options. They've got their Riverside Mill Food Court, which is their quick service. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but this one makes me so happy. The Riverside one does? Yeah, I don't know why. There's nothing. I mean, it's got this big old like 30 foot like, yeah, spinning that is wheel cool. outside. But I don't know why. But that one walking in there, every time I do, I just get all the feels. I like walking so across the bridge to it. Yeah. Uh, over the water. That is one of the most beautiful. That's why I think we liked Riverside for so And we still do like yeah. it. Um, there's something about that little area I just love. Back in the 90s, I stayed with my aunt and my mom, and we have footage in that same space. Uh, it's really cool. I think I have like, it's literally like a three second clip, but if I can find it, I'll put it over here on the video version. But just, I think it's cool too, looking back in 1996 or whatever it was. Around a while. Yeah. That's so cool. So they also have um, Boatwright's Dining Hall table service. We've not eaten at that mm -hmm. one. It was, I want to say there was like clothes or something weird the last time we stayed. And that was a while ago. Yeah, maybe it was. Um, I think our friends Ben and Emily ate there, though, because they stayed at Riverside when they went. And I think that's where they... Yeah. I feel like I remember them talking about that. And they I, they definitely went and saw... Um, I'm assuming it was Yeehaw Bob Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> um, who plays there Wednesday through Saturday nights at the River Roost Lounge. Yeah. And I don't know if he has, like... I, I've always wanted to see that, and I've never seen it. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's, like, a set show that he does, or if it's, like, a piano bar and you just, you know, shout out. I things. know that... Our friends loved it. Yeah. Like they went multiple nights. I think they did. I think they went a couple times. <laughs> but I think they did say it was the same each night or very oh, similar. It? So we'll have to ask him, but I'm almost positive. They were like, oh, they thought it'd be more like different. And it was kind of not the same thing. Not a piano thing. bar, just more of a show. More of a, but I think still piano bar vibe, not. Yeah. That's what we got to add know. to the list. We'll have to ask him. I am dying to go to that piano bar on the boardwalk. I cannot believe we've never been there. I but know. I have friends. Well, it's that... hard with kids because you, we have to go before a certain hour. Right. But oh man. I love piano bars. Anyway, um, so they also have Muddy Rivers Bar, which I think is on Old Man Island, which is the the where the main pool is, and they have like the fishing areas on there. Um, they also, I'm pretty sure, have the the largest oak tree that's ever been transplanted in the world, or something like that. Wow. Was there. Yeah. That's. So, a, I mean, that's like a pretty that. big deal. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, all on that Old Man Island there. So I went on a run when we stayed in French Quarter most recently, and. I went through some of Riverside and the running trail there, if you were like into running and you were like wanting, this is one of the prettiest ones because you run through both Riverside and French Quarter and it's gorgeous because you're running across to that island, you're running across the bridges, then you're within the, like, there's the oh, quiet Magnolia nice. Bend area and then there's the more fun. I mean, it was a very memorable, I also was doing it early in the morning. It was still dark, so oh, I got a little yeah. lost, but it was half the fun. But there was fun seeing people milling about. It's like, you know, 6.30 a.m. And there, there's, it was always dads, always dads with their coffee. I think of you. They got their coffee filled and they're, it's like the dad and the grandpa and they're just sitting out there looking around. I'm like, why are they already up? Like, Dude, I wish I was an early riser. I've gone through phases. Like when I used to, I used to have to be at work at seven. Mm -hmm. So I was up at like five o'clock in the morning because it was like a 45 minute drive when I used to work in hotels. Mm -hmm. And I always thought like, okay, I'll do this and then I'll get into it. Man, I still cannot get up early. It's, it's hard when you're your own boss. It's awesome to be your own boss, but it can be hard. But also with the kid's schedule, you're well, dealing with that. But yeah. I'm also like, I'm also trying to take advantage of sleeping in a little bit now because within what, a year, two years? Well, when Genevieve, Genevieve starts kindergarten, school, everything's, yeah. Because she's in preschool and we can take her at whatever time we want. And that is but trouble for us. For the next 20 years, we are up. Yeah. <laughs> There's no sleeping in. We're just enjoying this last year, guys. Yeah. Okay, get off our backs. Uh, okay, so the pool is, yeah, a pretty basic pool. Yeah, that's... It really, kind of I was kind of surprised to see it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, we've swam in that a lot. But when I compare it, apples to apples. Oof. Yeah. So transportation-wise, they, of course, have buses to all the parks. They... Do they have an internal bus system? I think so. I think so. I'm like 90% sure they do. Because I think um, on the map, Well, while you look it up, I'll talk about... Um, yeah, East Depot, North Depot. So yeah, they have wow. West Depot there. So yeah, they have an internal bus system there. Okay. And it's not quite as big and as like Caribbean Beach. So it wouldn't take as long, I don't think. But they also have the boat to Disney Springs. So that's, again, always a nice little thing. So... Let's switch over to the other side of Port Orleans, Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter. So we stayed there most recently, like we said, and this definitely has a just a way more fun vibe. And what's weird is back when we were staying at Riverside more often and just loving on it, I used to think about French Quarter and be like, eh, like it's a little like, I don't know. But now I'm like, no, I really like French Quarter better. Yeah. 
I always compare the two, like the Port Orleans Riverside is like Louisiana and then French Quarter is New Orleans. Like it's like almost the city like the city of New Orleans because it's, it's, it's got like a Mardi Gras theme and stuff like that. So that's kind of why kind of what my comparison between the two. Um, but the like I said, it's almost like it's, it's, it's a section of a bigger resort. But it's the whole resort. So it is super walkable. It is super walkable. And I love the little streets there. Like it feels like you're in a little city, but there's no cars and you're just walking through. And it's it's so quick to get to the main lobby no matter where you are. We were about the furthest away you could get. And we were still so close. It was, it was so close. Yeah. Which means the pools are close. The quick service is close. Like everything is close. And speaking of the pool, it is one of my favorite pools. It has that ginormous like dragon. I don't even know what yeah. it's actually supposed to be that's a slide yeah. and it is so cool i know you you went on it last time i think yeah. your brother jason did too like the pool itself is so neat they have mm-hmm. a really cool splash pad too they have a really good playground right there when you walk in it's a really unique shape for a pool too yeah it kind of winds around it has its own like little pockets yep and it has like a big shell with this what's in the there's something in the shell maybe it's just like turtles or something i forget but there's like a big shell on the side of it too hmm. um and they've got the big jester out in front by the pool area too so it is it is definitely one of my favorite pools yeah and side note the kids splash area is called doubloon lagoon <laughs> that's so cute that's the splash area yeah. oh nice i thought that was the name of the pool itself oh maybe it is maybe it is well Maybe the whole area is. Okay, but okay. either way, I so, love yeah. the name Dublin Lagoon. I feel like I'm not saying that right, but you get it. So th- looking at the rooms, it's a really streamlined one. Because thinking about, like, looking at Coronado Springs, there's, like, 12 different room types. This, they only have standard view, water view, uh, pool view, I think. Yeah. Uh, garden view. What, so just the views are the, the difference there. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have preferred rooms because the room, it's so small they don't need them. Every room is, I guess, a preferred mm-hmm. room. Um, and... Oh no! I lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? No there was no sleepers. no fifth sleepers. Yes. So there's if you want if you need that extra pull down bed, got to stay at Riverside. Boy, if we were ever to have another kid, we got to squeeze in another trip to French Quarter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave one of them behind. <laughs> That'll be fine. Which one? <laughs> uh, I'll leave you behind. Yeah, that makes right. more sense. Um, so food wise, their quick service food court is Sasagula Floatworks and Food Factory. This one's super fun because it's got like all this, you know, kind of over the top, oversized Mardi Gras stuff up above you mm-hmm. and like beads and stuff. But they also have Scat Cats Club Lounge and they also have their cafe. And there at the cafe, you can get some really good coffee and most importantly, beignets. Yeah, and they were really good. And side note, don't order too many because I ordered like plenty and then we got them and they were huge. I'm like, oh my gosh. So many. But they were so good and we took them and they have some outdoor seating out in like the main area where you can just people watch. Mm -hmm. That was so just lovely. Such a happy memory. Yeah, and like they have the wrought iron looking balconies and Mm -hmm. it's just again like walking just the little street there is just so fun. It just makes me so happy. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so that's that's its own resort really could be a thing. It really could be the uh, just a section at Riverside. But I'm kind of glad it's not. I'm kind of glad it's its own. Little pocket. Yeah. All right. So the last one we're going to talk about before we share our personal rankings of our number ones, et cetera, are the cabins at Fort Wilderness. So we should start by saying <laughs> that they're changing them. <laughs> yeah. They just announced that they're so they're doing a bunch of renovations over at uh, Fort Wilderness, and they they had uh, what's the name of the restaurants? I already forget. It's already I'm already forgetting Trails End <laughs> and Crockett's Tavern. It's slipping those from are being my changed. Memory. They're they're renovating those, but they're also redoing the cabins, which I'm very torn about. I loved the cabins. They were like, and they're, they're really just kind of replacing them with similar things, but different. Same, same, but different. Um, exactly. So I really loved the cabins, and I hope. And I'm sure they will do a good job with the new ones. They always do. Yeah. But for the time being, I think they said they're supposed to open sometime in 2024, but they're taking the exact same footprint and literally taking the old ones out and putting new ones in. So it's... They look a lot more modern. It's pretty interesting yeah. to see the the renderings. Yeah. And it's supposed to be a DVC thing, but I always joke that I'm like, DVC is nothing because anybody can stay in any room. So you if just you want to... And yeah. Book, there's no such yeah. thing as a DVC room because anybody can stay in any room. It's just you would pay cash for it instead of using using points points. but obviously certain things will sell out faster because they're dvc and this that and the other but um it's just anybody can stay there but i have a feeling for a while when it first opens it's going to be a little bit hard to stay there although a lot of times with dvc resorts they will actually leave some of that inventory for 
cash paying guests or for guests that are paying in a, a normal way. So they might have some set aside. So even if DVC people can't use their points, you can actually still stay there. So anyway, so they, they've released this new concept art of just the outside and they look really cool. I think they're going to be Thank really you. nice, but I am a little sad that the old ones are going away because they just have that nostalgia too, because Fort Wilderness is like OG, om- oh almost gosh. opening day resort. There's that sing-along song of where they're like at Fort Wilderness. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now those cabins I don't think are original, but just the, the whole vibe of it. And what's funny is they just renovated these like in 2016. Like it wasn't was it that, that long ago. Recent? And they did, and, and I think they, it wasn't a huge renovation, um, but they did change a lot of it. I The setup of them was really nice because you had your own little, it's funny, one day we'll do an episode on these as like a retro Disney because they won't yeah. exist anymore. But they were set up really well. There was a separate bedroom in the back. There was the living area in the front. Really nice kitchen area with the table and chairs. Really nice bathroom. You had an outdoor area with, you know, a table and chairs out there. One thing, so a couple things just about Fort Wilderness itself you should understand if you were thinking about staying there in any capacity is that um, it's really big. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So they have an internal bus system. Our biggest recommendation, if you can swing it, is to rent a golf cart there. It's kind of pricey, $65 a day, and you want to, you have to, we definitely recommend getting it reserved ahead of time instead of waiting till the day because I remember we were there getting ours. And someone was trying to get one. They were like, we're sold out. Oh, really? He was I like, oh, no. That. I think I was alone. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah. Point is, um, it's worth it. Because A, what's more fun than going around in a golf cart? Um, because then you can drive yeah. your golf cart to the bus station. You park it there. There's a whole area. And then you get on the bus, go to the parks, whatever. But um, that's the other piece of it is the transportation. You're so close to Magic Kingdom. But the only way to get there would be bus, of course but is with the boat. And that way of approaching Magic Kingdom is so magical mm-hmm. and so cool, but it's not always the most convenient thing. <laughs> it sometimes takes a while, yeah. But it is so beautiful. So it has a lot going for it. Um, I'm just going to be so curious when the cabins, when the new cabins are there. Yeah. We're totally going to stay. I know, I know. Well, and like I said, they haven't done anything really on the insides yet, and they don't know an yeah. exact opening date, so we don't know a whole lot about it. But yeah. I am, um, I did love the way those were set up, and yeah, the golf carts—they're just fun. So I always tell people, I'm like, just factor that into almost your the budget. room rate in in your head, because I think they're fifty five dollars a day. Oh, fifty five, okay. But then adding tax and stuff like sure. that, they, I always say budget sixty five dollars a day for those. But they're just—they're also really fun. <laughs> um. So the other thing to know is. A couple of magical things about Fort Wilderness is, one, they have their campfire sing-along with Chip and Dale. Now, this is not like the other resorts campfire things they have. This one is a straight-up, full-on, free show. Like, with lights, you got the characters coming out. You don't have to pay a dime. There's a campfire going on. You can pay, I think, for s'mores kits, as you, mm-hmm. which you can at any of them. But it is a full on show with like yeah. stands to watch it. And it was and... so much yeah. fun. I loved it. It's one I of my favorite it. memories. Me too. And one of the reasons we stayed in the cabins, because like I said, they're almost like your own little house to go back to every night. And yeah. I just, it was so cozy. We got groceries delivered and we were I making breakfast. It. But because we had a young kid at the time, we thought this is great because if she's crying in the middle of the night, we're not going to bother any of the neighbors at the... <laughs> it's true. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At the hotel near us. So that's one thing that I always recommend too. If you have one kid that you know gets up in the middle of the night and cries or screams or whatever might be a good option it was it was great (laughs) um the other thing to talk about is the restaurants there so a lot is changing they have they've had trails in there for a long time that's kind of in flux there's the hoopty doo musical review which we'll have to talk about in another episode but we both it's very fun you get way too much food and drink that much it's pricey but they'll give you enough food and drink to make it worth your while (laughs) But they do have a food truck there called the Chuck Wagon, and they also have P&J Southern Takeout. So you're not really going to get a big old restaurant feel there, but you can definitely get, there's plenty of food to eat there, and you can kind of take it back to your place or to your camper or wherever, or you can eat it there outside. But they have options, but with Trails End kind of in flux, it's just kind of a weird yeah. time. And I am sad because that was always one of my favorite sort of hidden gems. We loved going to breakfast over there because the food was always so good and it was mm-hmm. always easy to get a reservation. And mm-hmm. so yeah, the, they're that's changing. But again, we got we gotta we gotta move on. We gotta do different things. I did hear that Disney's getting rid of a lot of their food trucks. I don't know what all that includes, though. I think, like, the ones, all the food trucks at Disney Springs, I think, are going away. I don't know if this would be included in that or I not. doubt this would be because I think they need food options right there now, right now. especially, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, why don't they just drive the ones from <laughs> Disney Springs over? That's right. Um, the other thing to talk about are their pools. So 
they have two, if I'm remembering right, pools. One is more of a quiet pool. It's literally a square hole in the ground with bathrooms. Like, that's it. I think there's a hot tub over there, too. But it is very quiet, kind of tucked away in the trees. But their main pool definitely still has that vibe. There's, like, a little quick service little area there where you can get food and drink. Like, limited options. But it's there bathrooms and that's where they also have a kid's splash pad area too so they've got a water slide that's like a corkscrew so they still have a lot of the same you know options as the other disney resorts do but again it's not a super walkable resort so if you have your golf cart you can golf cart on over it was kind of far from where we stayed if i remembered right i think we ended up taking the golf cart to get there because it was it was yeah yeah. Um, now one thing to keep in mind is that fort wilderness does not have towels most resorts have towels at the pool area Fort Wilderness does not. And I so, double checked that for 2023 and it's still true. So just make sure you bring your own bring towels. Bring your own you. towels. Um, but they also have a lot of like other things you can do. They have a sand volleyball court, tennis courts, bike rentals, carriage rides, pony rides, a petting zoo. Like there's that whole tri circle D mm-hmm. ranch area. So, I mean, this is one of those places that there is a lot you can do that have nothing to do with the park. So if you know you're someone that you'd be spending a lot of time and you like the vibe of like Fort Wilderness, you will love it because that's, it's it's that, so fun. Well, and that's one of the amazing things to me, and we'll talk more about this with the deluxe resorts especially, but some of these resorts are so amazing that people would go to them just to stay there. Like I think about some of the campgrounds my family used to go to, mm-hmm. and this is so much cooler, and they have so many more things than other places we would drive to and just stay there, let alone everything else the Walt Disney World has to offer. Yeah, like So it's pretty amazing. Wow. You know, people would go to this resort if it was just a, I mean, this campground, if it was just a campground, mm-hmm. <laughs> let alone. Oh, yeah. There's also four theme parks and a million well, other things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Shall we talk rankings? Yes. This may be our longest episode yet. To date. <laughs> I hope you guys are still there. This is like a, a, you're in a lot of car rides listening to this. Like, it's not just a driving to and from work. It's like a three days in a row driving to and from work. All right. So you want to do your ranking first? Do you want me to go all the way through? Yep. Okay. Number five, Port Orleans Riverside. It just, now comparing it to all the other things, it just doesn't have as much going for it, you know. Number four, Coronado Springs. The lobby in the tower is so cool. The restaurant Toledo, the fact that you could pop up to the lounge and have views of the parks, catch some of the fireworks, really cool. But I I lowered it because the transportation options are so slim, just buses that, you know, that's something I think about when we're booking. The cabins is my number three, but of course that's with a huge asterisk because we don't know when the new ones are going to be there, what it's like. Um, But just keeping in mind, it definitely gives a totally different feeling for your trip. Yes. Totally different feeling. I think it's still cool and awesome, but it is different. Um, And of course the Campfire Sing Along show just bumped that one right up. (laughs) Number two is Port Orleans French Quarter. I love that it's smaller and closer together. I think it's really fun with kids. The, The pool area is super fun the beignets Mm -hmm. (laughs) and my number one is caribbean or caribbean if you nasty (laughs) beach yeah um the amazing pool areas there's so much to do it's huge and not only that but it also has that skyliner stop and at just adding in that extra transportation option i think is huge also you can just walk to the riviera and that's one of my favorite resorts ever it's huge yeah just i want to go there and get some coffee from there and then walk around Mm -hmm. caribbean beach some more yeah i totally agree also we didn't even mention by the way caribbean beach has beach areas Mm -hmm. it's kind of blocked off from the water um because of alligators etc but there's a beach area with hammocks. Oh, we did kind of talk about and that. And Coronado Springs has those too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to very, very quickly go through mine because same reasons and basically same ranking. But we also we haven't even started talking about uh, listener stuff yet. So uh, mine is almost exactly the same. My four and five are flipped. So Port Orleans, uh, I'm sorry, Coronado Springs is number five. Wow. Number four, Port Orleans Riverside. Number three, The Cabins. Wow. Number two, Port Orleans French Quarter. And number one, Disney's Caribbean. So Beach. our top so, three match. Yeah. And then we just flip the last two. All yeah. right. So we have got to get into listener notes. Let's Ish, go. Which is good because my iPad here was a mountain to hike. <laughs> Jesse Joe Hollowell said, are the themed rooms worth the extra cost? So for example, the pirate rooms at Caribbean Beach, princess rooms at Riverside. Well, again, we talked about the pirate rooms are going away. I don't think they're necessarily worth the extra cost unless you have a kid that is really into it. In that case, of course it is, because if you've got like a boy that was like so into pirates, you know how magical that's going to feel for him or like super into Tiana and princesses. Um, But generally, as a rule, if they're not wildly into it, 
I don't think so because the rooms themselves, they're really cool theming. But again, if no one in your party really cares that much, then I, I think you could save the money. But it just totally depends. La Lola 1990 asked, how long does it take to get to Epcot Hollywood Studios via the Skyliner hmm. from Caribbean Caribbean? Uh, I think it's, I mean, I would say if you're factoring in time, like try to get there, I would say 15 minutes. I think it's about 10 minutes from from Caribbean Beach. I would say it's about 10 minutes to each one. I, yeah, I, and it's just, a, that's just kind of a safe guesstimate because, you know, it might stop for a second. You might wait for a minute or two. I would almost factor in 15 just to add in, like, if you had to wait a bit or whatever. Most of these questions <clears throat> we actually answered as we were going through. We so did. We don't, we don't need to go through a whole lot of these questions. What, think, um, Amy Joel Vicia asked, what resort is most kid-friendly? I think I Caribbean, think Caribbean Beach. Beach, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. <laughs> um, I mean, for all the reasons we said, the pool area, the playground, the um, it's just got it all. It really does. And it's just fun. It's bright colors. Um, also we, when we went into the quick service for breakfast that day, uh, one of the cast members offered Genevieve a like free Mickey Rice Krispie treat thing. And I'm like, those are like $6 and it was so nice. And then I was watching one of my other like vlogger friends. She also went in and her kids also got free and I'm like, what is going on at Caribbean beach? And it was like months apart. So float on into there and see if you get a free... (laughs) Very kid friendly. Um, Martha in Brand 90 said, uh, top restaurant at the moderate resorts. Mine would be Toledo. Toledo. Yeah. No, no questions asked. Maybe Sebastian's Bistro once we try it. We just don't know. <laughs> Should we switch to the others? Yeah. Or? Okay. So again, most of the questions there, we'd already answered at some point in this hour and a half we've been talking here. So we're going to move over to uh, listener stories and uh, that kind of stuff. I, think, I don't even know if I said, was it listener stories? that I said, or tell me your favorite memories. That's what it was. Tell me your favorite memories. So let's see what people had to say. So, hey, it's Maddie K said, my first trip to Walt Disney World, my family stayed at Caribbean or Caribbean. We had the dining plan and as kids thought it was so cool. We could swipe our cards and pay on our own at the food court. I remember like Aww. days of uh, uh, the keys to the key to the world cards. Yep. So Sar J. Lars said the boat from Port Orleans to Disney Springs What a relaxing way to travel. Also a great memory. That really is. I don't think we talked enough about that, but the boat ride to from either of the Port Orleans, although isn't it one boat launch or no? I think it is. I think we, no, it's not one boat launch, but I don't know if they pick up like one boat goes to both. Yeah. I think we just went right, right back and forth to French Quarter. If I remember, I don't think we had to stop at Riverside because it's pretty far up to get there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. But that boat ride is so relaxing and it's one of the most random, like you're going down the this waterway in Disney World that's not a like highly traveled water so it's just kind of cool it's like a hidden pocket of Disney and I will say that is one of the coolest parts about staying at Port Orleans happy Disney wife said watching my daughters go down the dragon slide at French Quarter for hours (laughs) dragon slide dragon slide dragon Dragon slide slide. let's all let's go down the dragon slide well that works way too well liz schaefer said coronado it's a great bang for your buck it feels very deluxe to me that's what i'm saying it feels like a deluxe resort at a moderate price point smells like one too (laughs) she also says it has so uh so much food and bars toledo three uh, hidden gem which yes three bridges the main pool yeah it's got so much going for it Mm mm-hmm all right, Matthew 6VS13 said, the hammocks at the Port Orleans Resort, perfect way to relax. So hammocks at any of them, just that yeah. that feels like vacation. So uh, Kaylee Lori Lynn said, I'm a little late because this we actually posted yesterday, long story, but it says, um, our first trip, we stayed at Port Orleans Riverside. Our flight was delayed three times. We didn't get into the resort until after 11 p.m. One of the cast members took us on their cart from the lobby to our room with all of our luggage so we didn't have to walk and he flew down the path. It was a wild ride and so memorable. He turned our bad travel day magic. That's I awesome. I love that. Avery, Avery Olax said the uh, the great smell alone at Grand Destino evokes memories. We spent our wedding night there. That's That'd be a great, oh my gosh, place. That. Yeah. So Jesse Joe Hollowell, didn't you already read one from mm-hmm. them? Said, Riverside, no one knows how to have a good time like Yeehaw Bob. <laughs> I want that on my tombstone. No one knew how to have a good time. <laughs> like Yeehaw Tyler. <laughs> Caribbean Tyler. All right. So we always like to read one of your guys' lovely reviews. So this one's from the Apple Podcast. So this one is from McGregor UT, 
And she said, five stars, like a casual conversation. I got into Tyler and Jessica's vlogs about a year ago and really love their style and commentary. I'm thrilled to have an on-the-go version of their YouTube videos. (laughs) I love that. I can listen to in the car. If you're looking for fun, casual conversation about Disney and all things travel, give this podcast a listen. After one or two, you'll be hooked. That is so nice. That's such a nice compliment. Awesome. All right. Well, so we are going to do deluxe resorts next. I think we're going to split that into two because this was five resorts and we've been talking for almost two hours. hours so so uh, I think we're going to split deluxe resorts into two and then we're going to do a weird one after that. I'm oh, to it's it. going to be weird. We were, oh, I'm excited about it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for listening slash watching. I hope you will subscribe in all the different places and oh, yeah. we will see you guys in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>